Hello everybody. Cheers to the tranquilizing Tuesday. You can see something different on the screen today, something related to grammar. As we haven't discussed any grammar in this session so far, we have continuously been working on literature. And a great part of literature, a great fraction of literature has already been covered. We are almost done with the syllabus of the first assessment. That is the pre-midterm examination, or uh, you may say cycle one examination. It is time uh, for a change uh, for, to not allow the monotony to set in. Let us shift to grammar and uh, discuss grammar for a few days, which is uh, obviously all the more important, probably the most important. Though we cannot draw a comparison between the importance of grammar and the significance of literature, both are essentials both are two different legs of the same body so both are equally important but and we cannot uh, overlook any one of those so let us start with some grammar today and when the word grammar strikes the first word that props up into mind is tenses obviously yes uh, this these are two most striking words when it comes to grammar sentences and then tenses this is what we generally hear this is where the teachers generally start this is what the teachers they have been talking about in all these years in all these classes but most of you could never be certain about the usage of tenses not only you even we the teachers sometimes are confused tenses are quite huge they seem to be eternal and they always give you gives one give one scope to learn more and more there is always a scope so uh, a whole thesis is written on the tenses there are thick books available on the uses of tenses but here I'm here to teach you the basics of tenses first and then we'll move to the moderate level to the advanced level right so tenses is not only about knowing the structure of a particular tense right it's not enough to know that present indefinite tense is subject plus first form of the verb and then s or es an object where to use s or es where not to use s or es where to use do where to use does what is present continuous tense is ing form plus is mr and how to make uh, assertive sentences how to make uh, interrogative sentences what are imperative sentences all this is not enough so more important is to know the usage uh, along with knowing the structure of the sentence so knowing the structure is one thing but knowing the usage or the context where to use it in is rather more important so I'll divide learning of tenses into two parts dear students uh, today like we'll discuss in the first class we'll discuss the tenses in general where we will not focus much on the structure of tenses rather we'll be focusing on the contexts wherein and in what situations are different tenses used in what way so before that one should be definite about what tense is most of you are confused that uh, yeah obviously many many rather there was a time when even I, I considered tenses to be time so it is generally given as a reference to make you understand it easily that tenses are nothing but time like time we can divide time in three parts past present and future and this is what tenses are all about so tenses equal time which is altogether absolutely wrong Tenses are not time. They should not be confused at all. Let me try find out the fine difference between tenses and time. Now, what is time first of all? Time is a, a, a kind of imagination. Time is our perception of reality. Yes, time is what we find to be real. This is just a perception of our reality there are times there are three kind of times present past or future i repeat 
time is nothing but a perception our perception of reality whereas what a tense is tense is a grammatical category yes dear students tense is a grammatical category marked with an inflection of word yes there is you always see a finite verb in every tense so that is marked with an inflection of a verb and that expresses when an event or action takes place in the flow of time past present or future in simple words tense is something that establishes a relation between the time of happening of an event or an action to the moment of speaking this is what tense is on the other hand time is nothing but our perception of reality dear students so you must not confuse ever time with tenses as i said today we'll be discussing tenses in general right contexts and situations and circumstances and how these different tenses are put to use right so let us quickly start having explained to you what tenses are right so let me flash myself off the screen this is going to be very very interesting a meeting dear students stay tuned yeah there we go now there's another way tenses are defined you see a category of verbal inflection as i said that it is marked with a verbal inflection there is always a finite verb in every tense it cannot stand it cannot exist without a finite verb i'll explain you more reasonably what a finite verb is as there are non finite verbs as well which is itself another important topic that obviously i'll be covering in the in the session in the time to come so a category of verbal inflection expressing the time at yes they have divided it into three parts at during or over which is state or action denoted by a verb occurs so what you must grab from here is this is a verbal inflection it is all about time during at or over where an event or action takes place and which is denoted by a verb right what is inflection now inflection is change in pitch or tone of voice probably you may not get this point as of now so as and when we progress with this unit you'll come to know what are they talking about here and you'll have a better understanding of inflection and you'll have a better understanding of pitch and tone of the voice because right after it we'll be covering a relative unit uh, voices and immediately after we'll start with you know reported speech all are interrelated so moving on yes tenses are divided into three parts past present and future yes starting with past in a sequence in a chronological order we start with past once again i repeat we are not discussing the structures today dear students you just listen to me carefully watch whatever is being displayed on screen so past tense what is past tense about past tense expresses action activity and state of being in the past a time that is gone right i hope you all understand in this class at least at this level you understand the difference between past and present past and future present and future so i'll not elaborate it much past expresses action now this is what you should learn that it expresses action activity and state of being in the past right moving ahead now simple past as you know every tense is divided into four different types of tenses there are four subheads of every tense that is divided as simple or indefinite continuous form and then perfect 
form and then perfect continuous so simple past what does simple past express simple past expresses the idea that an action started and finished at a specific time in the past yes dear students there is always a confusion with distance and there is a great deal of confusion between simple past and present perfect i'll answer you uh, i'll definitely remove and eradicate that confusion as well right we'll blast it we'll kill that confusion today or maybe in, not today in the coming meetings so simple past expresses the idea that an action started and finished at a specific time in the past i'm focusing it here action started and finished but at a specific time there is an example you must mind these graphs on the screen please pay attention here also henry arrived at the airport now this is an action that uh, took place at a specific time in the past that started and that was over was completed so the graphical representation of this past indefinite tense is given here and especially in, in the light of this sentence the action is completed in the past itself you see here this is present this is future and this is past so henry arrived at the airport here you see the second form being used now there are some more examples i finished my lunch went to the beach and found a nice place to swim this is how we use this tense explaining or describing a series of events that we underwent that how we did one thing after the other in the past but all the activities all the events and all the actions are completed right so there is no change of tense you see uh, because all of all are of the similar nature so a series of completed actions in the past is defined this way now richard studied astronautical engineering for three years this is again another way we use this past indefinite tense the second form but this is you see a duration for three years he studied this for three years because but you people have learned you people have learned whenever there is time we should be using past continuous past perfect continuous or present perfect continuous or future perfect continuous no please don't make it a bar right so please don't be so narrow and constricted in your thoughts so give your learning free wings don't subjugate your thoughts at all please this is another way we can use past yes we can use past indefinite tense for the duration in the past for any duration in the past right now next eric was shy as a child but now he is very outgoing now the habit past facts past habits or you may say generalizations <coughs> we use it this way eric was shy when child but now eric is outgoing and alive and lively you may say dinosaurs were once dominant terrestrial vertebrate animals but they do not have any existence today this is again past fact or generalization so we define past facts or generalization using was or were right now when clause this is another very very important very important part of this meeting that the placement of clauses placement of when clause that cannot be used interchangeably that may lead to disaster 
or that may torment the information entirely so let me give you some examples first of all when class we use always happen first what happens first and what happens next what is means this is like cause and effect okay so when close a same at beginning or at the end of a sentence let me explain you more reasonably through example for example there are two sentences appearing on the screen as you see first is she answered my question when I paid her one dollar you see this is first close and this is subordinate close right she answered my question when I paid her one rupee see what happened first paying of rupee happened first and then this is the subsequent action she answered my question then but in the very next sentence when I paid her one rupee she answered my question here also though the sequence is same this happened first and this next but there is a difference in the meaning there is a difference there is a great it is diametrically opposite means here what in what was the inflection when i paid her one rupee she answered my question right now what is the difference between these two is to be noted here this is 16 minutes. now the difference is this you see in the first sentence first it was answered and then paid whereas in the second one first it was paid and then answered this is the difference now she answered my question when i paid her one dollar i paid her one dollar when she answered my question let us look uh, understand it from another angle she answered my question when i paid her one dollar it was first answered and then paid and in the second one first paid and then answered Now moving on to past continuous tense, uh, past continuous tense is used to indicate that a longer action in the past was interrupted. The interruption is usually a shorter action in the simple past. Let us understand it more reasonably, otherwise you, or oh, the only thing you know is an action that was in continuity in the past is past continuous. No, no, no. It is rather, it's much more than that let us understand it through different examples now first is the example of interruption in the past interruption in the activity or an event when we were driving through the forest our car suddenly broke down is followed by past indefinite at the same time this is past continuous when we were we were we were driving through the desert when our car suddenly broke down this is an example of interruption in the action in the past let us have another example this is where all the actions were moving parallel and there is no interruption and so therefore we are using only one tense past continuous tense you see this is an example of parallel action when i walked into the office several people were busily typing some were talking and the boss was yelling and shouting and the customers were waiting so all these are parallel actions in the past so this is a you you never uh, have actually divided past continuous further but each and every tense sub tense also is to be divided further yes means the first case was where past tense though was in continuation but interrupted but here is an example where past tense was continuous and was moving parallel to the other actions and was not interrupted moving on the past perfect tense now the past perfect expresses the idea that something occurred before another action yes past perfect we also know as deep past past into the past you may say it can also show that something happened before a specific time in the past you'll be able to understand it more clearly through example tony knew istanbul so well because he had visited now new istanbul itself is you see new istanbul itself is past and 
further deep inside that past you see through this example of this diagram past is here and this is deep past past into the past when we are talking about the past already and then further deep down into the past Tony knew Istanbul so well because he had visited the city several times before knowing see okay sorry it is only after visiting that he came to know fine now another example here now they felt bad about selling the house now they felt bad is past already this is it is in the past that they felt bad it's not that they are feeling bad they, they felt bad at the time of happening of this event or occurring of this event they felt bad about selling the house because they had owned it for more than now this is a case of duration in the past so this is another example of deep past being used as a duration and uh, once again I repeat it is not always perfect continuous form that you should use when there is duration come out of this stigma come out of this bar they don't be so resistant about anything in particular they, they felt bad about selling the house because they had owned it for more than 40 years into the past yes she now never saw a bear before she moved to Alaska is one example and now we'll see we'll study the same sentence with had she had never seen a bear before she moved to Alaska now if the past perfect is not referring to an action at a specific time past perfect is compulsory here past perfect is referring to a lack of experience rather than an action at a specific time for this reason we cannot use simple past tense here right dear students like the previous sentence was she never saw a bear before she moved to Alaska this is a different structure but whereas if you have a look at this she had never seen a bear before she moved to Alaska now what is the difference the difference is in this one oh it's already 22 minutes let me complete this because seeing a bear was not an action of any specific time and we have already learned that we use past indefinite tense only for the actions that took place at a specific time dear students so that goes all together wrong so if the past perfect is not referring to an action at a specific time past perfect is compulsory if the tense is not referring to an action at a specific time right so it is wrongly written here here past perfect is referring to a lack of experience rather than an action at a specific so there is no action that had taken place or at, at a specific time in the past so therefore we cannot use past in definite tense here at all so use a past perfect continuous tense uh, we'll discuss it tomorrow dear students uh, due to the constraint of time it uh, is already a big file and uh, will definitely be a problem for me uploading it so don't worry you just stay tuned i'll be covering each and every angle of the tenses so critically that you'll never forget the concept of tenses in your lifetime also another thing i want to state here that i want to advise you dear students you just don't take these tenses uh, important uh, for as i say for the sake of examination or appearing for examination or as, a, as a part of curriculum in class 10 or 11 or 9 no this is a lifetime asset because this is going to be extremely significant and considerably part of every comparative examination you'll face so it'll make you stronger it will enrich you in language you know is extremely important and for language tenses are 
even more significant the pedestal of any language is tenses so we'll be covering the remaining part of it in the next meeting till then have a nice time